against the wall. How you gonna smile when it seems our hope is lost? Tell me. church give God some praise. Did the church rejoice in the knowledge that God is a way maker, that God has blessed us to see a brand new day. Get up on your feet if you don't mind and just give God a hand clap of praise. He has blessed us to see a brand new day. He's a mighty God. He's an awesome God. He's a powerful God. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. He did my every groan. As long as I live while trouble rise. I'll hasten to God's throne. Come on, choir. Let's give God some glory.
Do y'all believe that the Lord will make a way? Yes, he will. Well, if you believe God will make a way out of nowhere, you believe God will make a way. You ought to give God a hand clap of praise. Give him a God hand clap of honor. God is indeed a mighty good God. He's an awesome God. He's a powerful God. And because we know that he will make a way out of no way, we give him glory. We give him honor. We give him the highest praise. We give him our hallelujah. Because he's the same God. He's the blessed God from the rising of the sun. And even until the going down of the same. What an awesome and a mighty God we serve. We welcome you this morning to the Friendship Baptist Church. Located at 522 West Main Street here in Johnson City, Tennessee. We give God glory and we thank him for over 107 years of being able to minister into the lives of God's people. We thank him for always being present. We thank him for being an on-time God. The songwriter said he may not come when you want him, but he is always on time. So we give him glory, honor, and praise. Let me give you a word of encouragement this morning and remind you that confidence doesn't come when you have all the answers, but it comes when you are ready to face the questions. Amen. And questions in this life are going to come our way. But when we got God on our side, he knows the answer. He already knows the answer. And if we ask him, God will make a way out of no way. At this time, we will have our announcements. Good morning, Friendship. These are your announcements for the week. Um, please check out our ministries. Details can be found on your bulletin, on our website, and on our Facebook page. Sunshine Band will be meeting this coming Wednesday in spite of the fact that we're on fall break. Also, the health ministry team will meet immediately after morning worship in the adult Sunday school room for an important meeting. Happy birthday. Our birthdays for the week. Alex Jackson, October the 8th. October the 10th, Sheila Colley. October the 11th, Gina Trotty and Celica Livingston. October the 12th, Jordan Carson. October 13th, Javen Colley. And October 14th, Robert Neal. <laughs> Remember, you can make a difference. Please see Pastor Latney to discuss the many ministry opportunities that we have need of in our church. Men and Women's Day 2023. Help us make a, vid, a new vision of a vision of our new fellowship halls a reality. All contributions this year will be dedicated to this growth vision. The facility will be dedicated in honor of our veterans who facilitated the beginning of this church and those past, present, and future who have and will sacrifice for our nation's freedom. Contributions will be accepted through the month of November, but we'll take them now, if you have them. <laughs> Envelopes are available in the church foyer. For additional information, please see Deacon Danny Williams or Crystal Caver. It's pumpkin time. Trunk or treat will take place this year on Tuesday, October 31st at 5.30 p.m. October is Pastor Appreciation Month. Our pastor is a preacher, a teacher, a counselor, a friend, 
a leader, Father in the Lord. Remember your leaders who have spoken God's word to you as you carefully observe the outcome of their lives. Imitate their faith. This is from Hebrews 13 and 7. Our community news. In conjunction with our 157th anniversary and homecoming, we will be presenting a journey through time, past, and present with the play entitled The Gathering, directed by Colette Russell on October 14th at 6.30 p.m. And this is with Bethel Christian Church in Jonesboro. The pastor installation of Pastor D. Lynn Bachman and First Lady Rayetta Bachman will take place on Sunday, October 15th at 3 o'clock p.m. at Bethel Christian. The guest speaker will be Pastor Frank Flo of Philippi Missionary Baptist Church. There will be a community health fair at Carver Recreation Center on October 21st from 10 a.m. to 2 o'clock p.m. Our partners, the Langston Health Task Force, the Proto Club, the NAACP, ETSU, Department of Appalachian Studies, the Appalachian Resource Development Council, Friendship Baptist Church, and Thankful Baptist Church. There will be many health screenings, door prizes, and lunch will be provided. Martha Davis Baptist Church observes 145th church anniversary, October 22nd, 2023, the theme, Striving to Work in Unity. The guest speaker will be our own pastor, Reverend Lester D. Latney, at 3 o'clock p.m. Please come and let's support this church anniversary. Oh boy, that reading is pretty small, but I know what it is. Kindly join us for the Ahern Annual Banquet, which will take place on Saturday, October 28th in Knoxville, Tennessee. If you need tickets, I have them. We need to change that font, don't we? <laughs> the NAACP, we are better together as we serve our beloved community. Freedom Fund Banquet take, will take place in November 17th. Donation is $50. It will be at 6 o'clock at the Muncie Memorial United Methodist Church. The guest performance will be by Kelly Jolly and Will Boyd. See any NAACP member for tickets. Let us continue to pray together to heal our world. Pray for every state, each church, that we become one nation under God. Also, please continue to pray for our sick, shut in, and bereaved of our church and community. Please remember, before the worship, speak to God. During the worship, let God speak to you. After the worship, speak to and encourage one another. Be blessed and be a blessing. God bless you and have a fantastic week. It is important that in times like these, with all the challenges that are going on in our world and the challenges that are going on in our nation, that we as God's people understand the importance of encouraging one another. Somebody today may have had some family issues on their way to church or even last night or the day before. We want to encourage you that God is able to fix everything, every circumstance, 
in every situation just like he said that he would. But it is critical that we as God's people need to understand that somebody you pass by today may have, this may be their last day. Uh, they may be considering even departing from this world. But you can help somebody and God will make a way and God will help you to tell somebody he is love. And we can do so by showing love, demonstrating love, walking in love, being kind to one another, and God will make a way out of nowhere. I know I've got some witnesses in here that can declare that God will make a way out of nowhere. So as we prepare now to go into the throne room of our holy and our divine God, I'm going to ask Deacon Adams if you will please come and lead us to the throne of grace. If you will, stand to your feet. And if you don't mind, there's something very powerful. There's something very awesome when you lift your hands up toward God because you're asking God to pour into you. And as he pours into you, he will pour out into others. So let's lift our hands up into the presence of our holy and our awesome God this morning. Good morning, church. Good morning. I'll be traveling this week down to Jacksonville. A friend of mine I was in the military with 50, 50 years ago, he, he passed away. So I'll be going down this week for his funeral. I'm asking y'all for traveling grace. Amen. Amen. And I'm asking that it go well for the family. Dear God. And I pray this morning for everyone who's lost loved ones, lost friends, Lord. whatever. Thank you. Let us bow our heads, please. Holy and divine God. Heavenly Father, I come to you this morning. Thanking you for grace. Yeah, thank God, you yeah, God. Mercy. I thank you for being a blessing in my life. I thank you for blessing me with a great family, great mother, great father. Fantastic sisters and brothers, Lord. Friends, Glory to Lord. God. I thank you for my church family, Lord. Blessing to them, Lord. But most yeah, of all, Lord, God, yeah, God. I thank you for never giving up on me when I was thank out there you, living for the devil. But one day you stopped me and you said it's enough. And I'm ready for you now, brother, to work for me, not yeah, Satan. God, yeah, God. And I thank you for what you did for me. Yeah, for where you brought me from, from saving my life, Lord. Yeah. Saving my life, God. Yeah. I pray. are still out there. I pray for them, Lord. Yeah, God, and yeah, I'm not going to give up on them like you did not give up on me, Lord. Hallelujah! Oh, God in heaven, I thank you. I pray for this church. I pray for the service today that the pastor yeah, delivered the message yeah, God, yeah, that you God. have him deliver, Lord. I pray, God, now yeah, for the homeless, the sick, and the hungry. I pray that each and every one of us that leave this place, that, Lord, put somebody yeah, in our way, path. Oh, that we can be a blessing to, that Holy we can Father. witness to, or that we can just say hello, brother. Father God, I thank you so much. Thank Lord, you, God. Thank you. For what you're doing in each and every one of our lives. I thank you for blessing each and every one of us for being here today. You brought us here safely. And I pray, Father God, that you take us home safely, Lord. We pray for the challenges that the world is facing, whether it be disease, whether it be wars, rumors of wars, whether it be hate crimes, whether it be just evilness, Lord. Evil is going out through the world. But Father God, we know we got a Savior. We can bring us through it all. Through it all. All we have to do is hold on. And like Rev said, keep praying because it may not be in your time, but God is time. Hallelujah. time is never too late. He's never too late. He's always on time. So I'm asking you to just hang on. Just keep hanging on. I thank you. I pray for each and every one of y'all that God this place and keeps the protected hedge around you, that nothing happens to you, that Satan can't get in and you can't get out. And God keeps you, bless you, and I pray that y'all continue to follow Jesus Christ, no matter yeah, what you face, follow Jesus Christ. I thank you, this morning, Lord. Yeah, God, yeah, God. These are all blessings I ask in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. The story is told of a young child 
his mama gave him a nickel to go and put in Sunday school. And that young child wanted to keep that nickel for himself instead of putting it in church. So he buried that nickel in the backyard. And after church was over, he was out in the backyard digging around for something that he knew was already there. And took that nickel and showed his mama and said, Mama, look, I found a nickel in the backyard. And mama said, no, you buried that nickel that I gave you for Sunday school in the backyard and now you're trying to claim that you found something that you already knew where it was. Took that nickel back to the church, that young child did. Gave it to the treasurer of the church and learned a lesson that you can't rob God and get away with it. That little child was me. <laughs> Ever since then, I've never tried to bury God's money. Hallelujah! I've never tried to bury God's money in the backyard, in the checkbook, in my savings account, or any place else. I learned a lesson, and I thank God that I learned you can't be God-given no matter how you try. And not only was Mama watching me, but God was watching me. So we need to understand that the blessings of the Lord accrue to us when we are faithful, when we are honest, and when we trust God. God says, bring the tithe and the offering into the storehouse that there might be meat in my table. Then he said, test me, prove me, and see if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have the room to receive. Was a tithe preacher 10%, 10, 10, a dime out of a dollar. And you have to plan for your stewardship. And if you will put back what belongs to God, I'm telling you, and I know I've got some witnesses in here, God will put food on your table. God will put clothes on your back. God will put a roof on your, over your head. God will put gas in your car. In fact, God will give you a car so that you can drive around in. He will make a way out of no way. Brother Allen, lift up all the tithes and offerings into the presence of our holy and awesome God. Father, thank you for being a faithful God. Thank you for being a God who always do. And Father, we're giving you back a portion of what you've given to us because you didn't ask that we would just give it all, but you said if we will trust you, that you will open up windows of heaven and pour out blessings. So bless now, God, in a way that we don't even imagine. Increase us, God, individually and collectively in accordance with our faith in you. Increase us, God, spiritually, physically, numerically, financially, materially, in every way, dear God. Not that we might be glorified, but that your name would be glorified, your people edified, and the devil horrified. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. All right, let's minister to the people choir. Come on.
Glory to God. He is excellent. He is worthy of all of our praise. From the rising of the sun and even until the going down of the saints. Our God is excellent. Our God is awesome. Our God is almighty. Our God is all powerful. And when you think about the goodness of the Lord and all that God has done for you, you ought to just give him a hallelujah about right now. Clap your hands and give God a hand clap of praise. He is a mighty God. He is an awesome God. He is indeed a way making God. Glory to his holy and divine name. If you will, please stand to your feet in reverence to the word of God and we will read into your hearing from Paul's letter to the Colossian church, the first chapter, and we'll read in your hearing verses 9 through 17. Pay special emphasis, if you will, through to verses 9 through 11 and the 17th verse. The writer says, For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, and whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And because they all consist within him, we ought to glorify God through the Psalms in the 34th number, verses 1 through 3, and declare, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make his boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Fall fresh upon me. Mold me, God. Make me after your own will. We pray, God, for your increase and our decrease. And allow, dear God, that there would be more of you and less of me. That the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart might be acceptable in thy sight. For you are my strength and my redeemer. It is in the holy and divine name of Jesus Christ we pray. And all of God's children say amen. 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 And amen. Be seated, if you will, in the presence of the Lord. Uh, There is a nature, an invisible yet very real and definite line above which you will never find a serpent. Can I say that again? There's a nature, an invisible yet very real and definite line above which you will never find a serpent. Early settlers in the United States referred to this line as the serpent line or the snake line. Often when they were purchasing property, they would ask the seller whether or not the property was above the serpent line. They knew the land on the mountain was very rocky, harder to clear, and not as fertile as the land in the valley. But they also knew the land in the valley was infested 
with rattlers, adders, and copperheads. Many settlers chose to raise their families on higher ground. I believe I, I just said something there. <laughs> Above the serpent line. Rather than risk serpent bites for themselves or their families. Just as the Lord has drawn an invisible line in the mountains which the serpents can't pass, there is a spiritual serpent line as well. There is a level of living that is higher than the world understands. There's a level of life available to God's children that allows them to live lives that are holy, pleasing to God, and free from many of the problems that cause the way of the transgressor to be hard. Proverbs 13 and 15 declares, Good understanding gains favor, but the way of the unfaithful is hard. This passage speaks about the spiritual serpent line. Here we are told how we get above the serpent line and how we can stay above the serpent line. I want to share three facts with you about being above the serpent line. I want to let you know, church, that as we grow in Christ, that is the theme of this message, growing in Christ, and as we grow in Christ, we have been elevated above the serpent line, enlightened about the serpent line, and empowered against the serpent line. What are you trying to say, Brother Preacher? First of all, if we are going to be elevated above the serpent line, listen to the word of God. Colossians 1, 12 through 14 declare again, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love and whom we have a redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. You see, when we were born into this world, we were born in the lowlands of sin. Amen. I don't care whether you were born in upstate New York or downstate Georgia. You were still born in the lowland of sin. The Bible is clear about this thing. Romans 3 and 23 declares, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And in Ephesians 2, 1 through 3, the author gives us the reality and the fact that we were dead in trespasses and sins and that we all have walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, and that we all had our conversations in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. The image becomes quite clear. Is it clear yet, y'all? The Word of God is teaching us that every lost person in the world lives below the serpent line. They prove it every day by the way they live, by the things that they do. And like the children of Israel in the wilderness, the lost have been bitten by the serpent of sin and are in great danger. What you're saying, preacher, the lowland of sin is a place of spiritual poverty, weariness, exhaustion, and ruin. It's a place of hopelessness, sorrow, confusion, and pain. It's a place of broken hearts, shattered dreams, ruined relationships, and troubled minds. It is a place where the vicious serpents of sin inject their poisonous venom over and over and over, bringing pain, poverty, destruction, and death. 
The testimony of this truth is everywhere around us. From Washington, D.C. all the way to Johnson City, Tennessee, from the White House to the outhouse. The low land is a place of danger. The end of the road for every person bitten by the serpent of sin is death according to the word. Paul teaches us in Romans the 6th chapter and verse 23, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, how the Lord. Ezekiel 18 and 4 declares, Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the Father as well as the soul of the Son is mine. The soul who sins shall die. This death refers to it. The Bible is not merely the death that leads to the cemetery. It is the death the Bible calls the second death. It speaks of eternal separation from God himself in the fires of hell. My great-grandmother Louisa Smith used to say, Child, if you don't get right with God, you're going to bust hell wide open. Psalm 9 and 7 declares, But the Lord shall endure forever. He has prepared his throne for judgment. Here is now the New Testament description. The Bible teaches us in 2 Thessalonians verses 1, chapter 1, verses 8 through 9. In flame and fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. That's the condition if you don't know the Lord. It doesn't matter how long you have been in church. It doesn't matter how long you have been coming, going, and not going. You need to know Jesus for yourself. When you become a child of God, when you become a servant of God by salvation, it, you are lifted out of the valley of sin and are set in high places with Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad about it? Faith in Jesus Christ through the power of the gospel of grace delivers the child of God from the lowland with all of its terrors. Aren't you glad about it? Faith in Jesus lifts the believer out of the valley with all of his serpents and sets them above the serpent land. Aren't you glad you've been lifted above the serpent line? The land above the serpent line is a place of spiritual replenishment, spiritual abundance, spiritual safety, spiritual security, spiritual hope, and complete spiritual abundance. Above the serpent line is the place that you ought to want to be. The Apostle Paul tells us how believers will get there. Consider the language that the Apostle uses in these words. In verse 12, he says, God is our father. Who your daddy? <laughs> when a sinner comes to Jesus for salvation, the sinner is adopted into the family of God according to Romans 8 and 15. We have been made, in verse 12 tells us, made to be meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life. This tells us that all believers have been given their portion of the eternal glory those already in heaven enjoy today. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that I've got a taste of heaven even before I get there. We got hope in heaven. We got love and the power of God working through us even right now. Verse 13 of the text tells us we have been delivered from the power of darkness. Sin and Satan no longer have any power over us. We have been given the ability to just say no. Amen. We have given, we've been given the ability to just say no. No to what, preacher? No to sin. No to temptation. No to the tricks and the trades of the devil. In other words, we are free in Christ. Anybody free in here today? Glory to God. We have been translated into the kingdom of his dear son. The word translated means we've been carried away. When God saved us, 
He carried us away, taking us out of the low land of sin and the power of darkness, placing us into the kingdom of his dear son. We have a new father who your daddy. We have a king who's your king. And sons, as citizens of this new kingdom, we have an eternity, an entirely new way of living. Anybody free today? Songwriter said, I'm free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains are holding me. My soul is resting. I've got a wonderful blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I am free. Verse 14 declares we have redemption through his blood. The word redemption means to lose after the payment of a ransom price. We have been freed because he paid the price for us on on Calvary. I want to know if anybody in here redeemed. Anybody been bought by a price? Can anybody declare Jesus has changed my whole life? If anybody asks you just who I am, don't give them your first name. If you got one, don't give them your middle name. If you got one and you should, don't give them your last name. Tell them I am redeemed. I'm a child of the living God. The 14th verse also declares we have the forgiveness of sin. All the things that we did in the lowland of sin, stealing nickels that belong in Sunday school, along with the corruption produced in us and by us, we have been cleansed and we are pardoned. I want you to know we are free. Anybody been forgiven of your sins? All of this strong evidence that we have been elevated to a higher place in Christ. He reached down into the lowland of sin, lifted us up for his glory and his glory alone. He set us on higher ground, and we are set above the serpent line. And he freed us from the power of the serpent who controlled us, and he controls us no longer. Somebody ought to give God some glory about it right now if you've been set free. Somebody ought to give God some praise about it right now if you've been set free. <laughs> According to the word of God, our new life in Christ is above the serpent line. Colossians 3, Colossians 3, 1 through 3 declares, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on earth, for you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Come here, Isaiah, Isaiah 57 and 15 says for us, for thus saith the high and the lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. We serve a holy God. He says, I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and an humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite one. Let me add one for you right here. We are told in Isaiah 40 and 31, but they that wait, glory be to God, upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. According to the same word of God, we have been lifted higher than we can even imagine. Can I add one more for you, if you don't mind? Ephesians 2 and 6 says, And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. If you've been born again, you've been elevated. If you're a child of God, you've been elevated. If you know the Lord for yourself, you have been elevated. You are not the same person that you used to be. You do not have the same desires that you used to have. You have been equipped to live on a higher level than the world that is around you. 
For that you should do what Paul says in the 12th verse and give thanks unto the Father. Anybody want to give God some praise for picking you up, turning you around, placing your feet on solid ground? If you've not been saved now, there, there's always a flip side to the coin. If you've not been born again, you are in danger. The poison of the serpent of sin still courses through your vein. You're trapped in your sin, and you're headed for a dying hell. And I'm here to tell you the devil is a deceiver. The devil is a liar. In heaven, you're going to get a well done, good and faithful service. In a hand hell, you will be well done. There are no rare steaks in hell. No medium rare. No medium, no medium well. Every steak in hell is well done. You will burn with eternal fire. But the story does not have to end in judgment and in hell. You can be elevated. You can be lifted out. You can be lifted up. You can be delivered. You can be given a new life, a new life in Christ. God will save you. Won't he do it? God will change you. Won't he do it? He'll set you above the serpent line. Won't he do it? In Jesus, you're above the serpent line. You'll be free. You'll be saved. You'll be secure. You'll be saved. You'll be delivered. God! We'll make a way out of no way for you. Have I got a witness in here? <laughs> That's why the songwriter said of old, the hymnologist said, I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as high old would bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My, my heart has no desire to stay. Where doubts arise and fears dismay. Though some may dwell where these abound. My prayer, my aim, his higher ground. I want to live above the world. Though Satan's darts and me are hurled. For faith is caught the joyful sound. The song of saints on higher ground. I want to scale the utmost height. And catch a gleam of glory bright. But still I pray Till rest I found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up. Lord, lift me up. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. By faith on Canaan's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. As we go, we have been elevated above the serpent line. Then we have been enlightened about the serpent line. The Bible gives us to know in Colossians, the first chapter, verses 9 through 10. For this reason, we also, the since that day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. In order to be elevated, in order to be enlightened, you need to have some serpent knowledge. Amen. Merriam Webster defines a serpent as a noxious creature that creeps Hisses are stings. Y'all know that Satan plants saber, serpents in the church? <laughs> Did y'all realize that Satan will plant serpents in the church? They're always hissing. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Always causing confusion. Always talking about folk. Always lying on folk. Always doing things that are ungodly, even though they say they've been born again. Let me point out some types of serpents to you. 
There are venomous serpents such as cobras, vipers, and rattlesnakes. Non-venomous serpents such as pythons, boa constrictors, and anacondas. Fresh water serpents, they've been in the water, such as water snakes, anacondas, and garter snakes. Marine serpents such as sea snakes, they've been in the water, sea crakes, and marine iguanas. Let me point out for just about a minute a one or two particular kind. There are boa constrictors in the church. Boa constrictors have a way of just grabbing and holding on and just squeezing the life out of folk. Amen. Always doing something that causes confusion. Always doing those things that will squeeze the life. You want to be born again. You want to serve the Lord. You want to have a relationship with God. But here come the boa constrictors. Just squeezing all your joy out of you. Squeezing all of your, your glorifying God out of you. Doing things and just squeezing you. Sucking the life out of the church. And they suck the life out of the church because they want to be impotent. I have position. And I'm not worried about people because I got position. Let me tell you about you and your position. <laughs> position can elevate you or bring you down. You got to make sure that you're walking in accordance with the will of our holy and our almighty God. You've got to understand those boa constrictors will squeeze you. Stay away from church boa constrictors. And then you got some venomous stakes. Oh, yeah, you, you, you got those that everywhere you go, you'll know them. That at least they're kind enough to make noise. <laughs> Amen. At least they're kind enough to make noise. And you'll see them and you, because you'll hear them from afar. And, that, and, and the rattle of versions of them, they will shake your tail for you. <laughs> So you recognize before they bite you that they are in the room. You got to make sure that you understand those poisonous mouths, those tenacious type of snakes or of, of serpents in the church who are always talking about somebody. I told y'all how to take care of gossips now, haven't I? Okay, when somebody calls your house, to talk about somebody, start praying for the person they're talking about. Don't give them a chance. Immediately start praying, and you will be on an international, not national, but an international do not call list. Don't call her. She ain't gonna talk about nobody. As soon as you call her, she gonna start praying for them. She prays for the pastor. She prays for the choir. She prays for the ushers. She prays for all the ministries in the church. Because poisonous, viperous, venomous snakes and serpents are never satisfied. Amen. They always think that it's better someplace else. They're just like, I need to borrow something from Dr. Butler, our former moderator. They're just like though, like Paul Ludafi on the yellow brick road. They're always trying to find something better over the rainbow. But while they're traveling down the yellow brick road of life, they always run into a brainless scarecrow who's afraid to tell them you don't know what you're talking about. They always run into a tin man that doesn't have a spiritual heart. They always run into a cowardly lion who's scared of their shadow. They always run into a wicked witch who's saying, oh, my dear, my dear. <laughs> and when the water of the Holy Spirit is poured on them, they start screaming, oh, 
what a world, what a world, what a world. Always trying to find the wizard of Oz. A man hiding behind a veil, and they forget to remember to just click your heels three times in the presence of the Lord and shout out, there's no place like home. Thank you, Butler. But those who have been saved by grace and placed above the serpent line understand the difference between a new life that they have been given in Jesus and an old life that they abandoned because of sin. <laughs> the power and privileges of a new life in Jesus stand in striking contrast to the old life of sin below the serpent line. The character and the quality of the life that we have in Christ. I don't know about you, but I'm glad I've been born again. Notice how Paul describes the difference in verse 9 of the text. When we're given a new life in Christ above the serpent line, we are given the ability to know God, to know his will, and to know the truth that leads to eternal life in Christ Jesus. Because he'll fill you, he'll completely fill you. He'll give you knowledge, total knowledge. You'll know his will, and God will give you the wisdom to understand his truth, his understanding, and you will live it out in accordance with God's will. He'll give you spiritual discernment and understanding. You can tell when folk are trying to pull the wool over your eyes. The verse teaches us that the redeemed have been given the ability to know deep and spiritual truths. For those who live above the serpent line, you come to understand that God can do anything but fail. That God will make a way out of no way in your life. The apostle teaches us in 1 Corinthians, the, the second chapter and the 14th verse. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, but they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. The results of godly knowledge and wisdom is exposed in verse 10. The verse shows us that it sets our living above that serpent line apart from those who live below it and those who live according to the way of this world. I recommend that you walk worthy of the Lord in all pleasing. Does not mean that we are worthy of what the Lord did when he died for us, when he was buried and when he rose again and he redeemed us by his grace. We never merit that kind of love, mercy, and grace. But oh, thank God for Jesus that we have been given the presence of the Holy Spirit of God and that because of the presence of the Holy Spirit of God, we can walk like he wants us to walk. We can talk like he wants us to talk. We can live the way he wants us to live. The word worthy means becoming I am a man of fitting of, of, of God's word. Paul says that those who live above the serpent line are enabled to live lives that are pleasing to the Lord God Almighty. Anybody want to please the Lord? Oh, when you desire to please the Lord, you stay in his word, you study his word, you pray. You'll ask the direction of God for your life and for the lives of your family and all of those who are around you. You need to get in God's word and God's word will guide you. God's word will bless you. God's word will strengthen you. God's word will encourage you. You can't beat me too far down. Because all I got to do is run to the word of God. And the word of God will give me the encouragement to know Jesus will make a way out of no way. The word of God will put a song in my heart and remind me that Jesus is on the main line. I can call him up. I can tell him what I want. 
Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Savior. Jesus is my Redeemer. Jesus is my Waymaker. He's my joy and sorrow. He's my hope for tomorrow. He's my friend when I don't have a friend. He's a mother when I'm motherless. He's a father when I'm fatherless. What a friend! Anybody got a friend? What a friend we have in Jesus. All, not some, all our sins and our grief to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. God will give us the ability to understand what it means to love him and he loves us. He'll make us obedient. He'll make us holy. He'll make us loving. He'll make you work. God don't have no sit-down saints. Amen. All of God's children have been raised up so we don't sit on our blessed assurance. We get up and we tell somebody, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word, just to lean upon his promise, just to know, thus saith the Lord. In other words, when you got Jesus inside of you and you're living above the serpent line, you can declare the word of God that says in John 15 and 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Have we got any fruit? Should I eat tree trees in the building? Yeah, I do. Any fruit trees in the building? Are you, are you bearing good fruit? Are you bearing the presence of the Holy Spirit of God? John 15 and 8 declares, Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. We need to increase in the knowledge of the Lord God Almighty. Those who live above the serpent line are ever increasing in their understanding of who God is, what God desires, and how God operates. This knowledge comes from reading his word, communicating with him in prayer, walking with him in humble obedience day by day by day. Loving the Lord, living above the snake, the snake line, the serpent line, is not just a Sunday morning activity. Amen. You got to have a relationship with God all day, every day, 24-7, 365, from the time you come until the time you go. Amen. Amen. You got to know that Jesus Christ is Lord. People who know the Lord are different. They have been changed by the power of God and elevated above that serpent line. People who know the Lord strive to live and to love differently than they used to. They've been changed, and they want to live a life that is higher than that of the world that they are living in. It's easy to walk in accordance with the way of the world. All you got to do is follow, follow the yellow. Just follow Jesus. <laughs> follow him, and you will live differently than people in the world. When folk tell you some things that you know are wrong, and you and you recognize that they are wrong, and you walk above what they are saying and let them understand, you got to live differently when you're a child of God. You can't do the things the devil does when you're a child of God. You can't live the way the devil does when you're a child of God. You speak in holy tongues, not unholy tongues. Amen. Amen. Because some of our saints, and a few ain'ts, you say the wrong thing, they say, hey, and that hey, I mean, hallelujah, either. You got to walk in accordance with the will of our know of our holy God. The story is told that a little girl was playing in the yard when she stopped to examine the flowers in her mother's flower garden. She said, Mama, I know now why flowers grow. Why, said her mother, because, explained the little girl, they don't want to get, they want to get out of the dirt. That should be our desire, to grow in Christ and get out of the dirt of sin. 
when you live below the serpent line, you don't mind dirt, dirt don't bother you. But when you live and want to live like Christ, you want to grow in him and make sure that you do everything to walk like God. But we need to remember some very important things that help us to understand. If you've been saved, you know the truth of God. You know where the serpent line is, and you know where the Lord wants you to be. When you sin, it's because you want to sin. Hello. When you sin, when you say you're born again, you living in the Word of God and reading the Word of God, you sin because you want to sin. And don't do a flip Wilson and say, the devil made me do it. <laughs> the devil can't make you do anything that you don't want to do. You live a life that's holy, that's above the serpent line, and you walk in accordance with the will of God. Sadly, many folk who even claim to be God's children still live below the serpent line. Another story tells about a young preacher who occasioned himself and was always riding his bicycle everywhere he went. One day, he was walking down the street and met another older preacher who asked him, why are you walking? Where's your bike? The young preacher responded, I don't know. It just came up missing. I suppose somebody stole it. And I think it might have been one of the members of the church. And what should I do about it? The old preacher said, well, go to church on Sunday and preach on the Ten Commandments. When you get to the one that says, thou shalt not steal, hammer on it. Stay on there a while. And the guilty person will be convicted and will return your bicycle. A few days later, the two preachers met again. The younger preacher was riding his bike this time. The older preacher asked him if he had followed his advice. The young preacher said, responded, yeah, I did. I followed your advice. I preached through the Ten Commandments. And I was planning to preach for a while, like you said, on the one that says that thou shalt not steal. But when I got to that one that says thou shalt not commit adultery, I remembered where I left my bicycle. <laughs> Everybody lost your bicycle. <laughs> y'all know where y'all car is. <laughs> when you grow in Christ, you're elevated above the serpent line, enlightened about the serpent line, and finally, you are empowered against the dangers in the serpent line. Colossians 1 and 11 declares, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, for all patience and long suffering with joy. And 15 through 17 say, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn above all than all creation. For by Him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through Him and for Him. For He is above all things and in Him do all things consist. The verses let us realize that we are empowered by a holy God, that he strengthens us, that means he enables us, that we have might, that means we have authority, force, and power, glorious power. The word lets us realize that the power is beyond the ordinary. He gives us patience, that means he gives us endurance. We are long-suffering, that means we can forbear, stand firm, no matter what comes our way. God will give you joy, won't God give you joy? Taken together with verses 15 and 17 through 17, this teaches us that we are unable to live for God with a power that exceeds ordinary human power. By his power, we are unable to stand firm with a cheerful spirit, enduring patiently everything through life, the world, and the enemy thrown at us. The power that we got is dunamis. 
is holy power. It's godly power. It's dynamic and it is divine power. Boom! We got Jesus on our side. Boom! We got his healing power. Boom! We got his delivering power. Boom! We got his way making power. Boom! I got Jesus! And as long as I got Jesus, I got everything that I need. The Lord Jesus enables us to live for him by extending to us his awesome and omnipotent ability. The end result is that we do not have to live below the serpent line, but we can live above the serpent line. But he gives us to know again in John 15 and 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, but without me you can do nothing. Galatians 5, 22 through 23 declares, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. Anybody got love? Yeah. Joy. Anybody got joy? Yeah. Peace. Long-suffering. Kindness. Goodness. Faithfulness. Gentleness. Self-control. Against such, there is no law. The way to defeat the enemy is by your altitude. Not your attitude. But your altitude. You got to rise above the dangers of the life. Stories told about a pilot who was flying on his solo flight. And uh, he heard some sithering and some seething in the bill in, in the plane. And uh, there was an older pilot who was helping him to, uh, <coughs> to understand how to be a good pilot. And when he heard the noise, he said, Raise higher, raise up higher, take the plane up higher, and uh, something will happen to the snake or to the serpent when you go higher in the Lord. He, he got up so high that the serpent froze and he was not able to move. In fact, he died. If you want serpents out of your family, go up higher. If you want serpents of your job, Go up higher. If you want serpents out of your life, raise up higher. Life, take the wings of the air. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings as eagles. They'll run, not be rearing, and they'll walk and not faint. You ought to do like B.B. and C.C. Winans in their Up Where We Belong song. You're alone. Know what tomorrow brings in a world where few hearts survive. All I know is the way I feel. And if it's real, I'm going to keep it alive. Because the road, the road is long. And there are mountains in our way. But yet we'll climb higher every day. You see, some hang on to what used to be. Stop living your lives looking behind. Because all we have is you right now. And our lives are in you to be found. But the road is long. There are mountains in our way. But we won't worry because in Jesus, we go climb higher every day. See, time goes by. And sometimes we'll cry. But he'll wipe every tear. Won't he do it? He'll wipe every tear from our eyes. That's why I say, Lord, lift us up. Where we belong. Oh, where the eagles fly on a mountain high. Lord, lift us up where we belong. Far from the world we know to where the clear winds blow. Won't it be a great day? When you finally learn that you don't have to grovel in sin. Won't it be a great day? When you discover that Christ saved you and dwells you and takes you to the high places of life, above sin and sorrow, above wickedness and a sin-cursed world. Won't it be a great day when you finally come to understand that you can live above the serpent line? And when serpents get in your home, call on them the name of Jesus. When serpents get in your life, call on them the name of the Lord. When serpents surround you, Get down on your knees and call on the name of the Father. Call on the name of the Son. 
Call on the name of the Holy Spirit and watch God make a way out of no way. Who wouldn't say it? A God like this. Anybody want to go to heaven? You see, he took us and keeps us above the serpent line. How did he do it? He came down through 42 generations. He lived 33 years. And three years flipped the world upside down. They hung him high, stretched him wide. He bowed his head, and for you and me, he died. But that's not how the story ends. Three days later, he rose again with all power, all power, all power in his hand. How did that happen, preacher? Heaven spoke, hell shook, humanity shouted, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He woke me up this morning, started me on my way, gave me the joy of the Lord, which is my strength. I'm glad I know the Lord. I'm glad I love the Lord. I'm glad that I am God's child. And I'm glad day by day by day by day by day I'm on my way to heaven. And I'm so glad. And the world can't do me no harm. Have I got anybody who knows that the world can't do you no harm? Have I got anybody living above the serpent line? Have I got somebody who knows that God is a way maker? Have I got somebody who knows that God is a healer? Have I got somebody who knows that God is a liverer? Have I got somebody that knows God will put food on your table? Have I got somebody who knows that God will put clothes on your back? That God will give you joy. God will give you peace. God will give you strength. God will give you power. If you don't know him for yourself. Now is your time. Now is your opportunity. If you're in the building, you ought to let God give you a hand. If you don't know him for yourself, now is the time, now the opportunity for you to know Jesus. Know Jesus. If you're outside of a church home and you don't, don't have a church family, we, can, we bless you. We will help you to grow in Christ Jesus. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that one day I learned for myself that can't nobody do me like Jesus. Not my mother, not my father, not my sister, not my brother. I got a wonderful, beautiful wife, but she can't do me like Jesus. I got awesome children and grandchildren, but they can't do me like Jesus. I know that God will bless us. I'm going to ask our deacons if they will please come and stand here. Minister, love Minister Jackson, if you'll come. If you want to accept Christ, if you want to become a part of this church family, now is your time. Now is your opportunity. If you need prayer, if you're going through and you feel like you're stuck, I'm here to let you know that God will release you. God will fix you. God will take care of your circumstance and your problem. These folk have been, been ordained to know that whatever you tell them in secret prayer, it stays with them. So whatever you need to pray about, come to Jesus just as you are. While the blood is running warm in your veins, you ought to stop, get religion, and serve the Lord God Almighty. Y'all ought to get up and give God some glory. Y'all ought to get up and give God some honor. Y'all ought to give, get up and give God some praise from the rising of the sun. He's worthy. He's worthy. Yeah. 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 He's worthy of all of our praise. I'm glad he loves me. I'm glad he makes a way out of no way for me. I'm glad he takes care of me. When I got up this morning, I decided in my soul that I'm going to serve the Lord each and every day of my life. Oh, glory be to God. Come just as you are. Come asking God 
to make a way out of no way for you. The Bible gives us to know in Nehemiah the 8th chapter and the 6th verse, and Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, when all the people answered, Amen! Amen! Amen. 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 Lifting up their hands and they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So if you believe the word of God, let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Come to Jesus just as you are. Watch God. Make a way. Won't he do it? Won't God do it? Won't he do it? Won't God do it? Glory be to God. Watch God. Won't God do it? What are you doing? What are you doing, aren't you? Hey! What are you doing? What are you doing? Yes, he will. God will do it. What are you doing? He'll fix it for you. What are you doing? Meet you. What are you doing? But Tom, what are you doing? He'll do it. What are you doing, doctor? He'll do it. I know he will. Young doctor, what are you doing? What are you doing? Hey, man. Hey, brother G, he'll do it. Glory be to God. Father, we honor you, we bless you, and we thank you for this day and this opportunity in your divine presence. Now, God, keep us in your care. We're departing from this place, but not from your watchful eye and your Holy Spirit. Now, in him who's able to keep us from falling, to present us falling before the presence of his glory, but exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our heavenly Father, be glory, dominion, honor, and majesty. Now, henceforth and forevermore. And may the people of God say amen. 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 Come on, make the devil.